Well, good, uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the most recent version of Building the Scottish State. And I have the great uh, inter uh, great opportunity to have with us this evening Mark Garfaro, who is who is a journalist and has uh, worked with different uh, research groups in Catalonia and is very, very familiar with the Catalan independence process. And so, first of all, Mark, thank you for being with us this evening. Thank you. Okay, it's a right. pleasure. Uh, absolutely. Uh, how is it going there? I mean, I, I've, I've, I've followed the Catalan process less over the past couple of years because it's been so painful seeing, you know, the, the, the situation it's in. But if you can give us a, an indication of how the Catalan independence process is going right now and whether the investiture of Per Aragonés today as president of the Generalitat may mark a, 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 you know, a positive direction for the independence movement. Uh, all right. Um, it's, it's hard to say because um, I think the Catalan independence pro uh, process and the people is suffering a lot for the past uh, years mm -hmm. uh, because um, um, not um, let's uh, let's hold on. let's put it this way. Um, it's very difficult. Can we repeat it? Yes. Yeah. What, what What is the situation in Catalonia, and you know, does the investiture of Per Aragonés today mark a a, a a positive development in the independence right. process? Right. No. I think uh, so far it's it's um, it's hard to say. It's difficult and and. Wait a sec, please. Okay, sure. Come in, my passport al wood per manja. She's Billy. Sí. Eh? Sí. No, per manja. Okay. So we 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 recognize it's been difficult. We've seen, you know, the prosecutions and the continued prosecutions of that. Um, tell us a little bit about the most, re uh, you know, about what's been happening, what the feeling of people is, and does the the election of Pierre, Pierre Aragonés, does that, is that a positive development in your view? Well, um, of course, the, the fact that uh, Peter uh, or Pierre Aragonés uh, be, will become tomorrow um, uh, president of the of of Catalonia of the Catalan government, it is a, a positive development for some people, mm -hmm. but it's clear that um, it's it, it is uh, Catalonia right now. It's it's living in a very difficult situation. Mm -hmm. um, there's number one. Um, uh, it never happened before, and uh, in the last elections, 54, 52% of the Catalan people voted in, in favor of independence. This is something that it has to be taken into account, the Catalan independentist parties, because before, prior to this, uh, to this uh, circumstance, they said, okay, since we don't get the majority of the people, uh, we cannot go or can move forward to independence. <laughs> right. Now, uh, the pro-independence parties, they've obtained 52% of the votes. Mm -hmm. However, despite of this, uh, the the pro catalan parties the, or the pro independence parties they are not ready to move forward in favor of, of independence mm -hmm. but of course now there will be a, a 
coalition in favor of independence or uh, in the in Catalonia. Mm -hmm. And this is something very important. This is something that it has to be taken into account. This is something that in Spanish politics, uh, the majority of the people, they will acknowledge and they take in the, into account, of mm -hmm. course. Okay. What, what And what do you think the next moves can be? I've been following and I've seen that the prosecutions are still continuing. They're, they're, they're prosecuting Albert Royo, who was head of Diplocat. Of You're finding him 4.5 million euros or something insane. Um, yeah. And, and, uh, and perhaps putting him in prison uh, for, for, because he testified during the, 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 the trial before. Um, and, you know, and, and there was also, I, I read that there was the policemen who were guarding Puigdemont when he was in Germany that are being, mm -hmm. that are potentially being prosecuted. Um, it, do, do you think that the, that the process is still going forward in spite of the prosecutions or is it really having a, a significant effect on the progress towards independence in your view? Um, yes, I think you are very right, and uh, you are picky in the in the in in the very political sense, and you are very right. Um, mm, the Spanish state uh, has a very political understanding that uh, there is a lot of people in Catalonia that they have to be punished yeah. for what they've said or, or what they've done. Mm -hmm. In this particular respect, uh, there's a lot of people like the one you mentioned mm -hmm. that uh, they will be punished by the Spanish state. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, you know, um, in Catalonia, there's a lot of people uh, that uh, we are being mm, frightened or um, that uh, we are uh, ac uh, all the time expecting the uh, Spanish authorities to go towards uh, a lot of people that they've been uh, working or um, being in, in the process of independence. Mm -hmm. And people like, as you said, Albert Royo or other people, uh, they are frustrated or they are being punished for the, this very reason. And this is very insane, mm -hmm. as you say. I, I, I totally agree. I mean, I, I met uh, Albert Royo very early on uh, in it, when when I held that uh, that conference in uh, Paris uh, at uh, Sciences Po back. I think it was 20, 2012, 2013. and he was the first person I met in the Catalan independence process. Yes. And I was holding a conference on Scotland. He had been invited with um, uh, with others to come and see that, and that was the, the, in his my conference that I held on Scotland. Was, it was an inspiration for him to go on to hold conferences with Diplocat in different areas of the world. So I was kind of at the genesis of that in a certain way. And to see him being prosecuted and seeing, you know, I was reading through the court, the 500, court, uh, 500 page Spanish court judgment, and they were citing these very conferences of, you know, of the, you know, misuse of public funds uh, and calling everything that he did uh, at Diplocat unconstitutional. It's, it, as you say, it's absolutely insane. And yeah, uh, yeah. And, um, and, and, and do you think that, uh, I mean, as, I, as, I, as I've been able to see, it seems that the Per Aragonés, I've met him, I met him once when he was in Scotland, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he seems like, he's, he seems like a very nice guy. He seems like someone that the Spanish authorities probably get along with but I mean do you see that he has any different route that might because he says that he wants to get towards auto determination and self-determination and uh, uh, amnesty for the political prisoners I mean it's it's a it's a it's a it's a you know it's the honeymoon now because he just got elected mm -hmm. but do you think he can do anything differently do you think that he can um you know 
square the circle or find a path towards independence that his predecessors were not able to? Uh, well, you, 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 uh, you are the man. You are the man. Uh, um, because you, you know, you know Scotland. Uh, of course, you know Catalonia as well. Uh, to be honest with you, I think it's going to be difficult for him to square the circle, as you said, and to try to find advantage for the Catalan people. Um, because, first of all, um, I think that the Catalan pro-independence parties right now we are not really looking for independence, mm -hmm. despite the very fact that they would like, they would be very happy about obtaining independence, but they are not looking for independence because they know that independence is something that um, would provoke a reaction from the a Spanish political elite, which mm -hmm. is uh, what we have now. But having said that, I think um, the, the political parties in, or, uh, in Catalonia, we are trying to obtain better or good benefits from the political situation we have now. Mm -hmm. They think that with the Socialist Party, this is a bit this is something more or clearer um, and they believe that this can be obtained through a political negotiation with the Catalan parties and the Socialist Party, which is something uh, probably not too strong like the, the PP party and everything else. Yeah. But um, let me say that uh, a lot of people in Catalonia, they are, it's not uh, that pessimist, pessi uh, optimistic as they are. Mm -hmm. So um, in Catalonia, in this very moment, I think we are living in a situation which is not so clear because I think the political parties, including the Catalan parties, they would like to see uh, a sort of um, agreement in order to fulfill um, negotiation between Spain and Catalonia and the, the people in Catalonia, they are not happy with this political situation. Mm -hmm. So we are uh, once and yet again in a political situation which is um, not going to help anyone. Mm -hmm. Because the politicians, they might be happy with a political situation. But the people in Catalonia are not happy about that because they, it's not because the, Catal the Catalan people are anti-pragmatic. It's just because they understand, they fully understand and comprehend that this political arrangement is something against the Catalan people. Mm. Yeah. And um, and how do you uh, how, let's see let, let me let me think how I want to ask this question. Um, wh what do you think is the solution? Uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to get at because you have the distinction between the the judiciary and the you know the the, the, the this constitutional court, the TS, uh, TSJC, and, yep. uh, and all of these other courts, and then you have the Socialist Party. You know, you know the Pedro Sanchez uh, Socialist yep. Party, which has seemed to be more accommodating, at least in the sense that they do have Catalan. Um, you know, members of the of the ruling coalition in Spain. Is there it? But but it seems as if I mean, just in my view, it seems as if whatever progress they the the Catalan parties might make with Pedro Sanchez, with having a dialogue, with all that, that is 
often contravened or you know brought back by the uh, by the actions of the Spanish judiciary. Is that how you see it? And do you do you, do you see a distinction between the the Socialist Party government and the and the Spanish judiciary, or are they all the same? Or how do you how do you see that? Mm, um, it's uh, uh, by the way, I think it's a very good question. I think you put uh, your 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 fingers uh, in a in a very distinctive or a very sensitive uh, position. Yeah. Um, let's put it this way. The, the Socialist Party, it, it wants to be, or it seems to be both, a more moderate approach to the Catalan political uh, situation. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it is as much conservative as the uh, the right wing political parties you can find in Spain, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the socialists they might they might appear like more very moderate and whatever you want, but at the end of the day, they are just the same as the conservatives. Mm -hmm. Let's put it this way. In terms of their approach to Catalonia. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. And considering that in Catalonia there has not been any violence and everything, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, what do you want me to say about that? Um, of course, that uh, the, the right-wing political parties, the political forces in Spain, they are very against of what everything is happening in Catalonia. That's very clear. That's clear. Um, and um, right now here in Catalonia, uh, we are all a bit taken aback, surprised of what is everything. But um, I think that in Catalonia, right now, so far, um, we are, or the vast majority of the people is like ex expecting a new government, perhaps not the best possible government in Catalonia. If, if that exists. <laughs> yes, correct. That's very correct. Yeah, uh, Mark. But still, um, we are in Catalonia thinking that uh, sooner or later rather than sooner, let's put it this way, <laughs> another opportunity will come for all of us to, to come back with uh, another pro-independence opportunity, possibility. Uh, let's put it um, the way you want. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, um, question uh, from Hashbury Stumble. Is there a way for the Spanish constitution to be amended, which would benefit the socialists and the Catalan independence movement? I would say that's unlikely, but in your view, I mean, is there any way the Spanish constitution could be amended to, you know, make it a little bit of a looser confederation mm -hmm. where the different groups could, you know, um, you know, the Basques and the Catalans and the Andalusians could have more autonomy under the, uh, without the kind of the strict control that the Spanish state exerts? Um, well, Mark, you know, you, you, I think Mark, uh, Mr. Magnot, you know better than myself. Uh, you're right that the, the, the socialists in Spain, they, uh, a lot of times, they are even more centralist than, uh, the right wingers, let's put it this way. Yeah, so yeah. no, no, I I would say that uh, that Spain, they've um, let's say that in the seventies and early eighties, uh, right after the Franco regime, the 
Spain managed to get as far as they could get uh, to the limit of being um, um, moderate or um, uh, in favor of um, regional autonomy, uh, or uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and I would I would say that if they. Now they would have had this opportunity. They, they wouldn't have done that far, to be honest with you. Yeah. But let's say that in uh, late 70s or early 80s, having experienced the Franco regime or the Francoist regime, uh, a lot of people, they suffered from it and they had this necessity, necessity to be, to reconcile themselves with people like the Catalans and the Basques. Now, I think they wouldn't have done that far. And to be honest with you, I think the, by far what they could have achieved it was what they did it in the early 70s. Okay. Um, the evolution that Spain suffered or experienced mm -hmm. in the early 90s when Catalonia and the Basques um, obtain a, a small development in terms of politics, I think now, together with the past, the previous past, now uh, neither the left nor obviously the right would agree with this. Mm -hmm. So I think now in Spain, the left, and mainly the right, but also the left, and the left, it means the Socialist Party, and the right, it means the, the, the PP and Vox and uh, Ciudadanos, mm -hmm. they all want to uh, regain powers from uh, the so-called uh, autonomic Spain. Yeah, so, so autonomous autonomous regions, whatever. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Um, Spain wants to be, in fact, a much more centralist country. Yeah, I, I wanted to. Uh, I've got some other questions coming in, but I wanted to. to uh, I wanted to get your view on Spanish nationalism and how it differs from British or UK nationalism. And as you know, I know you spent time. At, you 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 went to school in the UK, so I mean, you you yeah. know, uh, you're you're familiar with this. But you have British, uh, which is sort of you know all of Britain, you know, and and but that's. But but then you have you know but the English recognize Scots identity and Welsh yeah. identity and an overall kind of British identity, uh, you know, and you have Northern Ireland thrown in there. Um, how is Spanish identity different? I mean, is it more exclusive? Do they recognize? I mean, you know, because I remember in the uh, in the Statute of Autonomy that was passed in two thousand six and then overturned in twenty ten by the Spanish Constitutional Court, they 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 you know they, one of the main um, uh, holdings that they had was that this the, the Catalans were not a nation in any legally binding sense, and that was one of the you know the big you know dynamite that set off the the more recent. Um, uh, but 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 that can you can contrast that with more recently in the Westminster Parliament in two, uh, in 2018 they allowed a resolution to pass saying that Scotland has the uh, you know has the has a claim of right to choose the the government that they want to in the future. So I'm just want, I just wanted to get your own thoughts on the difference between kind of Spanish nationalism and how they seek to encompass, in my view, more um, coercively. The different nationalities or nationalisms or whatever they call it compared to uh, great britain re relative to scotland england and wales yeah um yes uh, i think in the the united kingdom everyone ac acknowledges that scotland is like it, it's a nation and it's part of the united kingdom as a nation yeah. whereas in the a particular case of spain it's not clear at all um, 
First of all, because uh, Spain, um, as a as a mother uh, as a modern nation, mm-hmm. uh, right after the Franco regime, um, it acknowledges that it uh, Spain has certain nationalities. And they, certain don't, reason. they don't use the word nations, they use the word nationalities. Is that correct? Exactly, because it's like it, 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 water da- it waters down. Yeah. It's like uh, it's, yeah. it puts water, uh, yeah, you understand? Yeah, exactly. um, it reduces it, it, it uh, you know, d- dilutes it. it, it dilutes it. Dilute, uh, exactly, um, the word nation. So it, it, it mentions the word, or it, it, it's written the, the word nationality but and regions but it's never been explicit who is a nationality and who is an, a region yeah right right um although everyone acknowledges that who is a nation and who is a nationality but it's never written hmm. on yeah. paper right in this particular sense, um, it explains uh, that, uh, okay, there is nations, uh, there is nationalities or nations and regions, but um, Catalonia uh, in its um, quest towards independence now, um, we haven't been in the best political situation because we didn't manage to become an independent country. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, we've been uh, on the halfway line. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, Spain is not happy about that, right? Unlike the, no. the the Basque country, <laughs> one can say that with absolute certainty. Yes. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. You know, uh, Mark, uh, you know better than myself because you are a, a, a you have a very good knowledge, a very sound knowledge, and you are an expert on it. And in this particular respect, uh, well, you know, uh, the Catalans, uh, we are like. Um, I think Catalonia, we are, we've been taken aback in many respects because a lot of people are not very happy about the, the, rea- the, the way our political leaders, they've acted, mm-hmm. right? And many people or most people um, ha- taking into account the very fact that we are not happy about the political leaders that they acted. Of course, they are not happy at all. The way the Spanish political elite is expected to act in Catalonia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because people might say, okay, uh, I was expecting my political elite to confront or to uh, act against the, the Spanish political parties and they left or they uh, vanish or yes. they yeah. uh, surrender to the Spanish political parties. But of course, the, the Spaniards, they are acting in a very miserable and indecent way. Yeah. And this is what is happening in Catalonia. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to get into that because I wanted to compare it to the Scottish situation because, I mean, uh, I, I mean, I, I, I understand pretty well the differences and the similarities and there are a lot of similarities, but the Scottish government d- does not have anything like the obsessive oversight of the Scott, the, the UK government does not exercise anything like the pathological obsessive uh, control that they've, that the Spanish uh, government has has a, uh, exercised over the 
Catalan Parliament. I mean, like it's everything the Catalan Parliament passed. It would go directly to the to the Spanish Constitutional Court. It would be systematically, you know, denied, rejected. Everything they did uh, was, you know, and and whereas in Scotland, they're, you know, it's a very different. It's obviously a different constitutional setup, but at the same time, um, over the past several years in Scotland, we've been watching as you know, Scotland has been taken out of the EU through Brexit, uh, and they've had no, numerous mandates to have independence, and they got another one just now. But I, I think a lot of people are feeling a certain degree of frustration with the Scottish government now, and they're not even under the same repression that the Catalan government is. So these are just yeah. my thoughts. And, and my, my thought is, well, I mean, think of what the Catalan government is up against. They're, they're getting jailed, they're getting, you know, they're getting prosecuted. Whereas Scotland, they're kind of on easy street. You know, they're all they, you know, they can, you know, I mean, no, none of them are getting jailed. None of them are getting prosecuted. You know, so how do you see that in, in kind of the comparison, knowing, know, knowing what you know about the differences between the two different situations? Well, I think, Mark, you are, you are right, absolutely. Um, the fact is that, um, well, it's true that the Scottish didn't get that far as the Catalans. As Scotland organized or held a, a pro-independence referendum, and um, Westminster agreed with this referendum. Yes, yes. And, you know, the result was clear, 55% in favor of remaining part of the UK and 45 against. Okay. Yeah. But um, as a Catalan myself, I must say several things. Number one, um, the UK agreed with this referendum. This is not the case of Spain. The UK agreed with this referendum, of course, but the UK is like not all that listen is called. Sorry, so, say, say that again. I didn't quite understand. The, the, the um, is not. You know that my English is not perfect, but I I'll would. Help, say, I'll help you out, of course. I'm always there to help. No, 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 Mark. You know we're friends, and you know uh, we love we love each other. We're almost uh, lovers. Uh, not no, quite, but yeah, quite. Yeah. No, no sex, no sex, <laughs> but we're almost lovers. No, but I said um, not all that. Listen is gold mm. in terms of the UK. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what does it mean that, you know, in Scotland, certain things happen? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and one day we'll have to talk about that. Sure. That there were a few things not politically correct that occur, but it doesn't matter. I was going to say that in Spain, uh, the referendum, unlike Scotland, unlike the UK, it was not accepted by the Spanish authorities. Mm -hmm. And however, the fact that the vast majority of the people voting in that referendum was in favor of independence, it's true that, you know, it was not a real referendum considering the ruling of uh, the Spanish constitution, European affairs and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But um, one needs to recognize or acknowledge that more than 2 million people, which is the majority of the people in Catalonia, voted in favor of independence. Mm. And now, certain pro-independence, in theory, political parties like Esquerra or Convergencia or Junts, mm -hmm. they fail to acknowledge this very fact. And yeah. this is something that as a pro-independence person, 
I um, I am very happy. I am very sorry to acknowledge that. Yeah, and 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 I I ask you this uh, very honestly, as as we are with each other every time we've sp spoken. But it, it's very it, it's 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 first to say you you're saying okay, well they the, you know the 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 Catalan government could have done more. But on the other hand, they're the ones that are facing prosecution. They're the ones that are going to jail. Uh, you know, whereas you know, you and I, as kind of uh, you know, passionate yeah. observers, can say oh, well, aren't going to be arrested. You know, uh, and so how, how do you? What uh, my, my my main question is: What more could the Catalan leaders have done? For example, especially in 2017, after the referendum. You know, uh, after it was held, after there was a mode, uh, you know, and after the Spanish st state was coming down like a ton of bricks, you know, could they have done anything differently? Do you think that that would have achieved independence, or how do you see it? Well, Mark, to be honest with you, I think uh, our political elite they they lack a lot of knowledge in, and courage in the sense that they miss to understand the nature of, of Spain. Mm -hmm. Because Spain, at the end of the day, is, is a country that uh, they know uh, about um, power. Yeah. And uh, the the, Span the Catalan political leadership, they they thought that being nice with the people, being um, sincere, mm -hmm. that uh, developing like a, a sort of um, nice or politically correct um, leadership, it could bring this independence at the end. Yes, and I, can, I, can, I can see that. I can see your point, yeah. Go ahead. And, uh, you know, um, real politic, you, you, you know, you, sure. you are the man, Mark, you, you know, you know, you know the shit. You are not a stupid person. You are a man. Of course, you you, you have values, and I know you very well. Yeah. You have values, and, and you are a man with um, with decency. But at the same time, you know politics, and you know history. You know people like Bismarck. You know people like uh, um, that. At the same, at, at at the end of the day, you know the reality of things. Mm. You know people like Metternich. Yeah. And I think the Catalan political elite, they lack, they, they miss, and they lack to know all these uh, things. I see, I see your point. I, I see, I, I, uh, Spain, having missed a lot of, uh, a number of things, Spain being um, a country with uh, a lot of misgivings, with a lot of uh, differences, with a lot of uh, a number of uh, uh, a lot of things not very well done. I don't yeah, know. Sure. Um, Spain at the end of the day uh, was a um, an entity much more prepared to face the the combat or the the right yeah 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 I, I can see because I remember when I you know I, I, not long after I met you I remember in we went we met in London at that conference and I remember yeah. you know, we we saw each other many times since especially in 2016 when I was there for three months. And I remember coming and, it, you know, and, and then, you know, and it was before I came, it would have been in 2015 when they had the election. Uh, and then there was a long process where Puigdemont eventually became, um, you know, president. And I just, 
I, I just kept thinking, well, they're such lovely people, which they were. Everybody I'd met in the process, you know, Albert Royo. Uh, and I remember we went to see, uh, you know, people at the parliament. Uh, you helped me introduce me to a lot of these folks. And, you know, I, 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 for me, it was almost like this naive sense that because they're such nice people and because they have such nice intentions, that of course they'll get independence. But, you know, it's obviously what you say is that, you know, you're dealing with the Spanish state here. You know, you're not dealing with, oh, yeah, oh, you, oh, you want to go you want to become independent no problem you know i mean of course you're such nice people that of course we'll let you, you know so i i, I see what you're, i i take your point of like not having someone who really know, can deal with that real politique aspect of of independence and i and i i see that i, I see that I, I, and uh mark you you know you you are a man that because you are a person with um, a great deal of integrity, mm. you are you are a real good person, Mark. But you are not an, a stupid person in any case. But let's put it this way: um, you know that in Scotland, and we both love Scotland very much. You number one because I think you have some. Uh, Scottish blood. My, my, my dad was born there. My parents met in Glasgow. Uh, exactly. I, I, exactly. I, it was an ab it was an aberration that I was born in the <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and I love Scotland very much, like yourself, because you we are um, we both are nationalists and in the in the in the proper sense of being nationalists. Yeah, no, absolutely. We love the world. Yeah. And we love the people, and because basically we go because we love our own people. That yeah. doesn't mean that we hate the rest. Exactly. Just the opposite. There's no superiority. It's like, oh, we're, uh, exactly. we're, we're better than you for some weird ethnic... Oh, of course, of course, yeah. of course. But, um, you know, uh, I think Scotland is doing a tremendous job. Mm -hmm. I think the political leader in Scotland is doing an, an enormous job. She is uh, uh, the best political leader I could ever think of. Mm -hmm. And she's doing an amazing job. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I will stop you there because, okay, we had the election recently and I was, uh, and I was uh, involved. We have a group that we meet on a weekly basis and we informed the ALBA party that was started by Alex Salmon. Yeah. And the, and a lot of what we said was put into their manifesto, including EFTA membership, a written constitution, and membership in the uh, Nordic Council. Uh, and I mean, you know, I mean, on Twitter, all kinds of stuff flying around. I was never insulting. I haven't burned any bridges. No, you, you are the money, Mark. <laughs> but, um, you know, there's a lot of suspicion over Sturgeon and whether she will, you know, she said she's going to have a referendum, but there's a lot of skepticism. I, I hope so. And I think she will, I, you know, but, and especially what the British state's doing, but how, let's see, what do we need to have confidence? Because I think, you know, both Catalonia and Scotland just had elections, both of them just for the first time, or, you know, or, or definitely did elect pro-independence majorities with a pro-independence vote within you know the the, the numbers of uh, so um how, how do you how do you see the future uh, i i think it's probably easier for scotland than catalonia just because they're facing much less you know real real repression and judicial um you know uh, judicial repression of the process but how do you how do you see it going forward well, I think uh, Scotland, uh, taking considering the the UK, uh, it's uh, a much more decent country in this particular respect. Well, uh, Spain, um, it's hard to face what it's going on right now. Yeah, yeah it, it is. Just just to add very quickly. I mean, just I just read that Albert Royo was facing yeah. four point five million euro fine. Yeah. Yeah, it made me physically sick, you know, as, as someone who's met him and, 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 you know, went to visit him, you know, I've, I've met with him several times over the years. He's the nicest person on the planet. And yeah. the idea that this lovely person like yourself would be put in jail for, you know, 
you know, trying to build a diplomatic service for Catalonia in the world. It's just, it, it's insane. It's just, it's just insane. And so it, it but it, it would be, it's very different in, you know, it's very different in Scotland. They don't, the Scotland's, do, Scot, the Scottish government does not face that level of repression. From, no. You know, from, from no, not, not at all. And you are absolutely right, Mark. Um, I think, Mark, to be honest with you, um, Scotland never got to the point of getting an independent country as it got Catalonia. Mm -hmm. And um, Catalonia uh, was in the brink of becoming independent. In mm -hmm. Or not becoming independent, but it was almost in the political situation to manage to get certain countries, which is the case, uh, to kind of or sort of um, to call for um, organizing um, a sort of um, um, Recognition? Um, not only re not recognition, but um, uh, what, let me say the word in English. Um, talking about the possibility of becoming independent. Okay, gotcha. Okay, and of course, at the end of the day, that means recognition. Right. Uh, let's pu uh, put it this way: mediation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was the case of of um, Belgium and other countries. Oh. Therefore, Spain has been very dreadful and drastic with certain people. Yeah. Because. Our political leaders and our political leadership, they pull out. Mm -hmm. can, you move your just, can you move your camera just a bit so your, your face is... Uh, I'm so sorry. Perfect, perfect, perfect. perfect. I'm so sorry. No, no problem, no that problem. means that um, a number of people, a lot of people, they were, you know, taken aback or whatever, or whatever it might be called, but um, our leadership, they left or they vanish yeah. or they run away, which is something that it was totally unexpected when we were supposed to declare independence. Yeah. yeah. Well, at the same time, but we'll, we'll wrap this up pretty quickly. But uh, uh, but at the same time, you could say, well, look, uh, I mean, well, Puigdemont leaves, and he's now, you know, uh, he's uh, now in in Belgium as an MSP. Yeah. But uh, Raúl Romeva and many others, they stayed, and now they're in jail. Uh, well, yeah. maybe, at least they're able to get out during the you know during the week and perform these uh, these functions. But I mean. It's it's a tough question. I'm not saying that there's a right or wrong answer to it. Yeah. Uh, but what do you think? What, what type of leader would have been required if you could replace Puigdemont with someone who would be more like a Metternich or a more like a I don't know whatever leader that could really go towards it? Because um, again, I, you know, I, I saw Puigdemont as a you know just a really nice person wanting to guide towards independence, but not with the real metal that was necessary to to get it after the after the referendum i mean what what do you i mean well of course i'm, I'm sure you would have done an amazing job you would have you would have been the, you know uh no i'm kidding but uh, or maybe i'm not but what, what do you think was necessary in a leader at that time after after the referendum in in the in the first of october of 2017 what do you think was necessary in a in a in a um in a in a leader Given that the police were chasing after them, you know, mo most of the leaders are in jail and others are in exile. Do you, 
Could anything have been done differently in your view? And this is of course speculative, but that, that where uh, Catalonia would be independent now or is the Spanish state just too repressive? Well, uh, mm, <clears throat> I think number one, Spain is a very repressive country. That's clear. But at the same time, I think um, our um, leaders in this particular respect, Puigdemont and also Junqueras, they, they made a lot of mistakes um, mm. or they did something wrong. It was... Mm, they didn't notice or they... They um, didn't really understand what the Spanish state was about. Yeah. Because I think Puigdemont and, and Juqueras, despite the fact that they were, they would love independence, but they didn't believe that independence was possible. Which, you, which is something that I totally... Um, dislike or dispute, but uh, they, I think they, they thought or they noticed that independence was, was not possible. And they thought, because they were not very clever, that trying to be nice with the Spanish political parties, elite, uh, it would have created the situation positive for them, mm. which is something to me very stupid mm. as uh, experience has happened. Mm. So they um, try to obey the Spanish political parties and you know the right the, the day before independence they call for an early election and everything, but of course that the people were, were in favor of independence and this is this was not possible. Yeah. And then they were forced to uh, call for independence mm -hmm. in Catalan Parliament in a very strange way, but they were, they were forced to uh, declare independence in the Catalan Parliament. But taking into account that uh, one guy left uh, Catalonia and moved to uh, Belgium, mm -hmm. put them on. And mm -hmm. the other one, he just let himself to the Spanish authorities. No one took seriously to the Catalan independence process. Okay. Yeah. What, However, what, what would you have done? I mean, because I'm I'm totally I'm I'm totally at odds on that. I know who I am, and if I was pushed him on, and I was you know, or Marta Rovira or others that just left, I can understand that. You know, I mean, and you know, so they're living in exile now. They're not in jail, whereas. You know, uh, you know, uh, Junk, uh, um, Junqueras and so many others are in jail or are spending a lot of their time in jail. I'm really divided on that because none of them are free, leading a, an independent Catalonia. They're e they're even ex or exile or in jail. So I'm divided on that of what I would have done personally. You know, in that situation, <laughs> if I was a leader of Catalonia. So it's it's a very it's a very very difficult question. Um, Mark, you are right. It's very difficult to say so. But to be honest, um, I think that the Catalan political parties, they never were honest 100% with the people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they didn't really want independence. They wanted something else like um, increasing the powers of the Catalan self-government and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But independence, it was not um, a real issue for them. Mm -hmm. However, it's true that the, the, those leaders like Puigdemont and, and Juqueras, they were 
pro independence guys but you know considering those guys when they were in times of being um, practical or being in power they were not for independent for independence I, I know I, I, I'm, I'm hesitating just because we're saying this. I mean, I know a lot of people in Scotland are saying exactly the same thing about Nicola Sturgeon and her government. Oh, they're not willing to just go for it. I mean, you, I know that all of the all of them want independence, but there's these big walls of the uh, of the UK and especially the Spanish state and the Spanish yeah. because, you know, you're going to jail. I mean, Albert Royo might be in jail for setting up a you know, or, or, and find 4.5 million. Yeah, euros. of course. You know, so it's, it's, you know, there's no easy answers. I'm not pretending that anything. No, no, uh, uh, but Mark, let me say to you, uh, uh, I'm sorry, you are totally right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think, and this is something very uh, indecent, the fact that they were pretending to be for independence and other people like Royo and others, they've become um, victims of yeah. all of it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay. And I feel very sorry for them. I, I feel sorry for everyone in, in the whole course. thing because it's just uh, these are people I've known and gotten to gotten gotten know and and just it's just horrible to see, you know. I remember seeing Albert Royo, uh, uh, you know, testifying in Madrid in the case, and I just I remember seeing that. This felt to my sick to my stomach, you know, and uh, and it's the same with all of them. And but I think it gets back to what we were saying before: is 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 you know when I you know when I got involved in this, I had this idea, this kind of naive view that you know a genuine you know want for people and the idea that uh, you know they're all they're they're lovely nice people and therefore they'll get independence it's as you say in the real politique it's just not that way yeah yeah okay no, no, of course uh, well, well we'll wrap it up but anything else you'd like to say uh before we uh say goodbye for this uh excellent interview well, that, um, I think, Mark, first of all, thanks for very much for the interview. Uh, I think the Catalan people is once and yet again in favor of independence. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to, um, we want to recognize the very fact that we are like other nations in Europe, like Scotland, part of the, the world and part of Europe, and we want to be as independent as uh, our country, but uh, um, the world so far is not recognizing people like us. Yeah. But we are still there we don't want to we don't want to deny ourselves and sooner rather than later uh, Scotland, Catalonia and other nations in Europe will be part of Europe as independent countries and uh, taking into account that we love the um, other countries. We don't hate anyone mm -hmm. and we hate um, people uh, that uh, pretend to be, uh, or let's put it this way. Um, we love everyone and we are against fascism or Stalinism. Agreed. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mark. It was it was a, it was a pleasure talking with you. Thank you for uh, for edifying our Scottish audience this evening. And uh, look back to uh, look forward to having you again really soon. It was really good. Um, Mark uh, Mark McNaught. I hope very soon 
to meet you here in Catalonia. You are much more than welcome to, to come uh, to my home. Maybe this summer I'll do what I can. Lots depends on all kinds of stuff with uh, coronavirus, but I, I'll be back there as soon as I can, believe me. <laughs> I, miss, uh, I miss it so much. It's been summer, I want you to be in my hometown, in my at home, because my wife and myself, we want you to be there. Otherwise, you know, we will be very fed up and be stuff with you. Okay, I, I, I hope I can make it this summer, if not very, very, very soon. And no, I'm, I, I, I was joking. Doing, there's so much. Eight, more than well, it's been 18 months since I've been to Catalonia, a little more than for Scotland. And, you know, I, I've been shut down. I've been saving money, which is good. But, you know, anyway. Okay, <laughs> thanks so much. Thanks so much. And you're welcome to stay on for a bit after, after we shut it down, so. My dear, thanks so much, and you know, we keep in touch.